Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Advent Litany is on page 3. We will light the fourth Advent candle with the prayer that is a small flame and will spread like wildfire around the world, bringing the good news to a peace to all the darkest corners. The royal line of David is like a tree that has been cut down. But just as new branches sprout from a stump, so a new king will arise from among David's descendants. The Spirit of the Lord will give him wisdom and the knowledge and skill to rule his people. He will know the Lord's will and will have reverence for God and find pleasure in God. The Lord will not judge by the appearance of heresy. He will judge the poor fairly and the quiet. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. Be wonderful Master, mighty God, eternal Father, Prince of Peace, his royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. The lighting of these candles will remind us of the light of God. The light I'm having a hard time. The lighting of this candle will remind us of the light God brings into our lives. Because God loved the world enough to send his son. We have new hope, new joy, new, new understanding, new creation, and new peace. We grow as children of God because of the new life we have as a gift of God through Christ. Let us pray. Let not our souls be busy in that have no room for you and yours, but quiet homes of prayer and praise, where you may find fit company, where the needful cares of life wisely ordered and put away and wide, sweet spaces kept for you, where holy thoughts pass up and down, and heaven belong its watch and wait for the coming. Almighty God, you all are all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. Our first lesson today is from 2 Samuel. You can find it on page 6. When the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to, the prince over, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, 
and have cut off all your enemies from before you. I will make you for a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be, dis and be disturbed no more, and evil evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from, time, from the time I appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 89, and uh, we'll read it uh, responsively. Your love, O Lord, forever I will sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever. Preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. My hand will hold him fast. My arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him. He shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Our epistle today is from Romans 16. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence theme is found on page 10. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, 
For you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Sunday of Advent, we have just read the story of the Annunciation, the Annunciation to Mary by the angel Gabriel. This is a story of willingness, the willingness of a junior high school age girl to be an instrument of God's love in the world. Mary stands out in our Christian tradition as being a faithful person. In fact, we consider her probably the most faithful person within our Christian heritage. Mary does her best to bring God's plan into fullness. Now, we have to remember that we as baptized people are also members of God's plan for creation. And as such, we are called to be faithful like Mary and work to bring the, the ideals of God into practice in the world in which we live. Now, Jesus taught and showed by example God's love. Jesus showed us how God's love is carried into the world through the service not only of himself, but of his disciples, people like Mary and us. As Christians, we are called to be these disciples that carry, carry God's love into the world. Hopefully, the season of Advent, which is coming to a close, the season of Christmas and Epiphany, which is to come, will refresh us and give us new energy and new resolve to spread God's love into the world. Although the prophets of God have been telling the people of Israel for several hundreds of years that they had turned their back on God. And they kept reminding them what God had accomplished for them over and over again so that they would remember to put themselves back on the trail or the path towards God. And in the fullness of time, Jesus came with this very similar message. The basic message of Jesus is, you have turned your back on God. You have turned your back on God, but God really, really seeks to love you so very much. Now the people who heard and responded to this message of Jesus were called disciples. Now although we talk about us 
twelve disciples. There were many, many, many more disciples at the time of Jesus than just those twelve men. There were women, and there were men that we don't read about, but they were all disciples of Jesus doing the work of Jesus in Galilee in that early time when Jesus was still walking the earth. And these disciples entered under the wing of God when they learned the response of discipleship today is a heart that says, Thank you, God. To thank you, God, for loving us so much. Thank you, God, for loving us so much that you gave us Jesus Christ and that Jesus gave us his life. He spent his time teaching and preaching. Eventually, at the end of his life, he gave us the gift of Holy Communion, and through his passion, death, and resurrection, the gift of everlasting life, and the promise of eternal life with our loving God. We are to say, thank you, as disciples, for the fellowship of those who seek to serve God while expressing their love for others. In other words, we are to thank God for the church. The Church Universal and our own church, Good Samaritan. Now, Jesus had a name for people who were his disciples at the time of his life on earth. He said to them, You are born again. Story of Nicodemus. But we as Christians living today are also born again spiritually. We are born again spiritually at our baptism. We are born again spiritually at our confirmation. We are born again spiritually every time we receive Holy Communion. We are born again every time we make a conscious decision and an effort at being a disciple of we are born again every time we make a conscious decision and an effort of being a disciple of Jesus. We are the new people in Christ Jesus. And we are called to bring to the world a new way of living and relating with people and all of God's creation. A new, as a new people, we should bring happiness and joy into the world based on our understanding of Christian hope. And this new creation, which we are working for and praying for, calls forth the best in us and in us. Well, shortly we're going to celebrate the birth of this baby in Bethlehem. What does this little baby Jesus demand of us? As any baby, he demands a great deal of his parents to raise him and to keep him alive, but he gets that demand grows as the child also grows. And as an adult, Jesus tells us he wants us to be concerned for the welfare of those around us. To be concerned for those who are hungry and thirsty and lonely, sick or in prison, or in any kind of need of healing, spiritual or physical. Jesus wants to be more than just concerned for those people who are hungry, thirsty, lonely, sick, etc. He wants us to minister to them. Concern is one thing, actually doing the work is something else. What else does Jesus calls us, call us to be? He calls us to be giving people. Read the parables, read the story of Jesus' life. Forgiveness is one of the most important themes that he stresses. Many times in his parables, you know, the story of the Good Samaritan, who is my neighbor? Or how many times must I forgive him? And Jesus says 70 times that or an infinite amount of times we have to forgive. And every time we say the Lord's Prayer, what do we say? Forgive us as we forgive those who have 
give up. This is a beautiful, peaceful kingdom that we are called to create and to live in. The sweet baby Jesus, whose birth we celebrate later today, like all babies, as I said earlier, demands the best from its parents. And we are parents of that Christ child because we are the ones who are giving birth to Christ into our hearts and into the world at this moment and at every moment in the future. God calls upon those who know and love Christ to show it to others by loving service to them. Now, despite what you hear, God does not call us to be religious. God does not call us to do good or to feel good. But God calls us to respond to the divine love by loving those around us. God calls us to respond to his divine love, to the divine love of Jesus, by loving those around us. Now come to the table. Come to the table where the love of Jesus is manifested in the bread and the wine and made available at, at this moment in time and space as we rejoice in the love that God has given us and we rejoice in the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of God. There are sermon notes on the back of your prayer list also. Let us stand and join in an affirmation of our faith. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Prayers of the, pe prayers of the people today. Rejoicing with Mary that the word comes among us. Let us offer to God our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. May we find in Mary, the servant of the Lord, the model of our heart's willing surrender to God's call. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. May we discover in true spiritual virginity the richness of what God alone can do to make Christ come alive in Mary, in us, and all the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May the God of mystery who dwells in unappro unapproachable light draw us more and more deeply into the path of divine wisdom beyond all human expectation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our assembly of disciples be a womb and a place for the shaping of Christ by God's power so that we may give birth to Christ from the womb of our community for the world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May our deepest hearts find strength in the gift of blessed hope, uh, that what God has begun to do in our world and in all our persons by Christ's saving work will be brought to its fullness by our Savior. 
For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. May we remember God, all who are in any need and who cry for the presence of God. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family and friends, and especially those who are committed to our prayers, please see the prayer list. Those with medical conditions, Leanne, Marilyn, Arlene, Deborah, Tony, Harry, Alex and Mary, Sharon, Stan. Those experiencing difficult times, Sarah, Sharon, Brianne, Marge and Darby, Leah, Paul, Ella, Michelle and Robbie, Sheila Misra. All those seeking meaningful employment, including Kevin and Janie. Those living with chronic illness, Bob, Shirley, Joyce, Ron, David, David, Mary, Deborah, Linda, Judy, Cheryl, Melba, Bob, and all those who are living with uncontrolled pain. For our aging elders and those who are restricted in travel, Jerry, Francis and Jack, Lynn and Carol. For our shared ministries, ministries, San Jose State University Campus Ministry, Latino Congregation at Trinity. For those who also are thinking about and praying for including Kathy, Bishira, Chris, Charlie, Jane, Bill, Marilyn, Cindy and Mike, Michelle. We also pray for the war in Holy Land, victims of gun violence and other families, all people and creatures who are suffering from extreme weather, all first responders, those who serve our country and veterans, all those who protect and care for creation. Who else shall we pray for today? For all families who are gathering for this great holiday season, and may be peace and friendship among all members as they gather. Let us pray for those whom we love but have joined the heavenly chorus of all the saints. Patrick and Robert Erbs, Augie and Doris Martinez, Tom Chatfield, Heidi Preston, Ralph Park, Margaret Jacobson, George Jacobson, William and Alice Kinnear, Clara and Albert Jacobson, Carol and wife Olson, Mr. and Mrs. Philip Brook, Mr. and Mrs. Paul Haas, Stan Salt, Bob Lulich, and all members, all former members of our congregations and family members of current members who have joined the heavenly chorus, praising God. In our diocesan cycle of prayer and ordination anniversaries, we pray for St. Stephen's, San Luis Obispo, St. Stephen's, Gilroy, St. Stephen's in the Field, San Jose, St. John's, Morgan Hill, for Lance Beiser, Robert Hansen, Linda Neal, Ian Montgomery, Richard Merrill, Lucy Thomas, Shelley Booth, Dinny, David, Dodd, Jacob, Ino Likara, Stephen Mills, Jeremy Bond, Michael Dresbach, David Jones and Tracy, J. Wells, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those groups that share our facilities and ministries. We especially pray for Alcoholics Anonymous, Al-Anon, Midori Bonsai, Westside Sunnymount Preschool, San Jose Young Knock Korean Presbyterian Church, 
and the fun time singers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, creator of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. May peace prevail on earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual work. together please 17 
to which was purchased the memorial fund. They are beautiful. Are they not, Heather? <laughs> Heather and I set things up yesterday. It was great to have you there. We give thanks for those today also. For those gifts from the apostle. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. I may have new linen, but I forgot to put my clothes on. <laughs> so last time I get to wear purple for several weeks. God of all power, creator of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, you were created after me. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. But we turned against you, and we turned we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by Christ and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took a cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us, from the com- deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Lord, be known to us in the of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Take them in remembrance that Christ gives himself for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith. Thank you. Those who are receiving by the common cup may come forward at this time.
let us pray in this act of spiritual communion with those who cannot be present with us. Page 23. Communion, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. And remembering particularly our own parish, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and for all the blessings of this life. For the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection. For the means of grace and the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. and We pray you come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds. Separate us from you. Let us serve you in, the, in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the gift of Holy Union. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There's four printed announcements in the bulletin. We've heard them already before, so you can just kind of read them again if you need to. Does anybody have any oral announcements? I do. <laughs> <laughs> we get to decorate the church now. So um, after our closing hymn, this is what we're going to do in order to get a little bit organized, okay? Heather and Mary will go back into the Alder Guild room and start doing things back there. Who would like to put the figures here at the crest? All right, you two put the figures at the crest. The rest of you go into the office, and there's a thousand million poinsettias in there. But before you bring them out, clean them up. Some of them have broken branches. Some of them have dead leaves. Clean them up a little bit, and then after the altar manger scene is set up and we do some other things, we'll be ready to bring the flowers in. Okay? Yeah, it's kind of nice we don't have many people here. You won't be following over each other doing the work. So just like, you, like we said, many hands make light work. And it's nice to have the church being decorated today. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Closing hymn is hymn 56.
Let's not even know how much we appreciate her pitch hitting today. Yeah.